But it's only been seven months, and some of you think that we're crazy for getting married. Yes. I give it a year. When you sit down to watch a romantic comedy, you're usually guaranteed that by the time you leave, the couple will end up happily ever after. So when Dan Mazer, a filmmaker famous for his work on edgy British comedies like Ali G Show and Borat, set out to make his latest film, I Give It a Year, he decided to do the exact opposite. I Give It a Year focuses on a newlywed couple who are totally and utterly wrong for each other. Rafe Spall and Australian actress Rose Byrne. It's just something in our marriage hasn't quite Clint. gelled. Ah, oh, you should just cut your losses now before your life becomes a series of squabbles about who put the King's Speech DVD back in the Sound of Music DVD case. He did, he wanted to subvert the genre and kind of watch a couple, a dysfunctional couple rather than a, you know, you sort of rooting for them to split up rather than stay together and that's a, kind of a tricky conceit but that's what Dan set out to do and uh, he comes from a really interesting comedy background as well, uh, and I thought, yeah, you know, look, I'll do it. You're a Ferrari, and he's a Volvo, and right now... I just need to be behind the wheel of a Volvo. I need... I need reliability. The director comes from a kind of a writing background, a writing producing background. I'm wondering, when you're dealing with somebody like that, do they give you the freedom to improvise and create uh, do stuff on set, uh, bounce off each other. How much leeway do you have to do that? With Dan, he very much did, yeah, whatever worked and would try things and throw things out and pitch new lines to you on the day. And all my experience so far with Bridesmaids and Greek, it's the same thing. It, more intensively improv on Bridesmaids and Greek, but also when I give it a year. Yeah, we did a lot of, we changed things and tried some things and it feels like it's the way it is with comedy. Does comedy thrive on the spontaneity of being on set and being able to see what you can surprise each other with? Yeah, it does and it doesn't. I mean, it's funny on sets because you know you get tired and the good joke gets tired pretty quickly and you, you're you performing for the crew and so you're trying to get laughs and you tend to uh, go off track a bit and you might, it might be funny and spontaneous, but then in the edit, I think it's a different story. Have you ever improvised something on set that you've absolutely loved and you've really wished made the final cut and it didn't? <laughs> um, there's a funny scene in Bridesmaids where when Kristen Wiig and I first meet and I'm in that ridiculous ball gown and she's in this like kind of very casual little outfit and I said to her in an improv, oh, did you come from work? Like, you know, it's the most patronising kind of... But it was funny and I that didn't make it... It was in the trailer, weirdly, yeah, but not was. in the movie. <laughs> you made the trailer! That's amazing! You have to meet Helen. You're so pretty. <laughs> You're so cute! <laughs> did you come from work? What are we doing for the bachelorette party? What about, like, a princess theme? Versace meets the gold rush. I'm thinking tanned gentlemen that swallow fire and wear sarongs. <gasps> Female Fight Club. We grease up. Surprise! Beat the crap out of her. I don't hate it. Vegas it is. Whilst Byrne may be relishing her newfound role as a comedy star, okay? her first major claim to fame, at least in the States, came with the TV series Damages, which rode the wave of high-quality US cable dramas. We came out the same year as Mad Men and The Sopranos had really set the bar, obviously, and Oz. I mean, there had been great shows, but we were really of that tidal wave of, of, of television shows that became very prestigious and were the writing was as good as a lot of feature films out there and now it's like you can't move for, for great cable TV, which I love. I mean, I'm a huge consumer of, of series myself, so I, I probably watch more series than films. What are you watching at the moment? Girls. Ah, oh, yeah, so good, isn't it? it's fantastic. That's, you get on that show. You already I live just... in New York. Come on. <laughs> I love Girls, yeah. That's my new kind of favourite. Um, look, just before I, le I leave you, um, I read something strange and I, and I don't believe it's true, but I, I thought I'd check. Is it true that 90% of your fan mail is still related to an appearance you did in Star Wars? In Star Wars, yes, it is true. That's so true. I'd say, I'd still say 90%. I mean, I don't get fan mail, but when I do, it, it really is majority from, from Star Wars. It's but, amazing. But that no, was like a 10 second scene I know, in. but it, it goes to show, I mean, that is, that is a absolute phenomenon, that, that series of films obviously we all know that and um exactly and I, I am in it for literally 10 seconds and i still get that's my fan mail it, you clearly left an impression those fans are fanatical yeah excellent roseburn thank you so much for thanks thank you so much thanks a lot thank you all the best